Hey you guys, uh, we're going to do something funny. You ever seen a boot taken apart? Um, I'm going to take apart this boot. We were out shopping at like a uh, Goodwill and um, I found one boot. This is, this is a pretty well made boot. This is a Tony Lama boot. Um, it's very well made. Got Napa leather here. It's got genuine, genuine python right here. So uh, let's take this bad boy apart and see what we got. Because what I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to recycle it into a case. And I'm going to use as much of the parts as I can on here. But in case you've ever wondered how a boot is made, um, you're about to find out. So boots have what are called uppers and they have soles. This is called the sole, the bottom part of the boot right here. This is, of course, the heel. You can find this stuff out on the internet too, by the way, but I just think it's fascinating. The heel here is generally made of leather, but it's thin pieces of leather that are laminated and then capped off by a piece of rubber. See, the rubber is nailed on right there, and the boot itself is sewn together right through here. Um, it's sewn to the body in here or to the upper, if you want to call it that. I believe that's the right term. Those of you out there who have made shoes or, or boots will, uh, will correct me, I'm sure. But uh, what I really want to get to is I want to get to this piece of python here and salvage as much of it as possible. So with that in mind, I'm just cutting through the... Uh, Cutting through the, uh, as much as possible here, I'm cutting through the um, seam at the bottom here, you know, that's uh, made to hold this boot together. And you know, it's pretty cool if you think about it because the thread on here is embedded in the leather, which means you can use it for a long time and, um, and not break the threads. Now eventually, you know, if you wear it long enough, and hard enough, you'll break the threads and then you'll have to take it to a, a shoe or boot repair guy and have it redone. And they have special sewing machines that can get up inside the boot and do that. So at this point right here, what I've gotten is, I've gotten it apart this far, and you'll see there's an extra piece of metal in here. Check this out. There's an extra piece of metal in here that's specially shaped to give it uh, more rigidity right through here and give you more support right in here. So uh, actually, you know, boots are pretty well constructed uh, pieces of footwear here. So, there we go, we got it apart. Now we got the, uh, we got the sole apart with the heel. Right here, you can see what we're looking at right there. Now I want to get this leather off of here as best I can without tearing up this nice piece of python that's on here so we can salvage whatever's possible to salvage on here. If anything, you know, if I end up not being able to get anything good off of here, then, uh, then of course we won't do that. We won't use it, but I think we can at least get an inlay or two out of it. It's pretty cool here how they come around the curves. So they basically make little notches here so that they can easily fold it, fold the leather around the curve, okay? You know, this is fascinating stuff for me uh, as somebody who works with leather. Um, but also, you know, it's, a, it's educational in a way if you ever want to reupholster, reupholster your chair or anything like that, any of these, a lot of these techniques can be used for that as well. So here we've got a sewn piece in here. So I got a, it's kind of sewn through the side here, right here. So it's not coming off easily with the glue. So I've got to get the, the razor in here. And we're going to cut through this. This is a, 
Very well made. Y'all want to be careful if you ever do this too. If you ever do this, you want to be real careful not to slice through your own finger here. It's very easy to slip with a little razor knife like this. So I'm going to tuck in the blade a little bit more. You want to kind of get it started so you can get in there without cutting the leather. But you know, it's fascinating because you can find stuff like this everywhere and you can re repurpose it. This stuff doesn't have to go and die in a landfill somewhere. Um, you know, when I'm done with it, hopefully I'm going to have enough leather to, to do something cool. And, um, and it'll make its way into a cue case, you know. And then the way I build, uh, the way we build our cue cases is, uh, the way we build our cue cases, the good part about this is, is that, um, the rest of this boot has a chance to live on pretty much forever, you know, if, uh, if the people take care of the case well enough. And you know, the boot itself also would have pretty much lived on forever if someone had, uh, had decided they wanted to take care of it. Maybe the other side got torn up or something and that's why there was only one at the thrift store. Who knows what the, who knows what the history is here of this. I don't, but I do know. So here we go, now we've got this taken apart so far, like that. So we have a liner leather here, and I'm not sure what the liner is. I think it's leather, but I'm not sure. So let's take a look at what the inner leather is. Yeah, it's like a suede, looks like pigskin. So I think there's pigskin inside. So this is the part, this is the part that actually touches your foot. You know, of course you're wearing a sock or something, but so it's lined with pigskin, and then uh, the uh, the um, Python here is grafted onto that. So it's got a pretty good seam here, so I'm going to try to cut through it this way instead. What I did there is I just cut through the seam right there. Now we're going to go on up the seam here. See this boot is sewn together. These two pieces here on each side are sewn on the inside. So if you once we get this open you'll see what the inside seam looks like but basically it looks like this sewn together and then flattened out here. Um, so you can barely feel it when you're wearing it. So here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cut the threads without damaging the leather too much, if at all, because I want to salvage as much of this, I want to salvage as much of this as possible when I'm doing it, because I really like what they've done here. And so any of these parts that I can get undone without damaging it gives me a better chance to use it later. So we got that part done, now I'll do this side. Get through the seam here. Gotta be careful. They build these things really tough, you know, so, uh, well, when they're done well made. And, um, I don't know a lot about boots, guys, so I don't know if, uh, I know, of course, of the brand Tony Lama, um, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Tony Lama itself is a good brand. Um, I, I think it's a good brand, but not being a boot guy, you know, it's probably uh, for all I know, it could be just a, a well-known brand, but kind of middle of the road as far as as far as uh, boots go. But I can tell you from. My experience right at the moment that it's uh, it's not easy to take it apart. 
There's an Oklahoman here in Oklahoma, of course. Um, her name is Lisa Sorrell. If you like boots, if you're a boot person, you're in my feed and you like boots, and you don't know about Lisa Sorrell, uh, you should go check her out. Um, she makes custom boots. Her name is Lisa Sorrell. It's S-O-R-R-E-L. And um, she's from some small town in Oklahoma. I think Claremore up there somewhere. Uh, but um, but Lisa is um, she makes some fantastic work. I you know again I don't know anything about boots, so I'm not going to talk about her quality. But if her boots are are uh, are say about a quarter of as good as they look, then uh, then I'm going to bet that she's that her boots are are up in the top quality top 10% of boots made in the world for quality. I'll just say it like that. Now you know from watching my videos in times past that uh, not everything that looks good is good. Um, so you know there's that. But everything here looks pretty good. The stitching is all good. So, um, you know, as I said, I don't know if Tony Lama is the best or, or uh, anywhere close to the best in terms of quality, but uh, all I can say is this, these appear to be pretty well, well made boots and uh, from a non-boot guy's perspective, so if there's a lot better boots out there, then that's good, that speaks, that speaks highly of our leather working industry here and uh, industry or all the good leather crafters out there they're doing great work so now we got this little piece off right here and you notice these are I think these are just pulls you know so you can pull your boots on um, this little piece here is uh, fairly well crafted let's go ahead and get that out of there just like that now I'll probably use that accent piece somehow in the case you know, you'll probably see that coming coming back to life somehow in the case, maybe as part of the handle or something. I've got two of them, so I could do I could do two handles with that possibly. It's the part where you got to be real careful because if you slice through this, if you get to if you're going to do something like this and you end up getting, uh, you don't want to get too frisky with it because what happens is, is you could end up slipping with a knife and uh, not only could you hurt yourself, but you could also, um, you could also hurt the material. So you want to be very gentle, very slow, take it slow. You're not in any hurry here. The difference between hurrying and not hurrying is uh, you could ruin your piece and um, not hurrying, it takes you about two or three minutes longer to do exactly what you're doing here. See what I'm saying? So, you want to take your time and pay attention and go slow and just cut these threads. Just let it come to the blade naturally. Okay, so we got that piece out. Up this a little bit. A couple more little threads here. A couple more. And just slowly cutting so we can pull this out. You don't have to force anything here either when you're doing this. I guess I should put the camera down a little bit more so y'all can see what I'm doing here. It's for anybody that cares, you know, I mean, you'll probably turn this video off long before you get to this point, but uh, it's kind of fun to sit around and think about, you know, where these boots have been, what were they used for, you know, they appear to be well worn, so, you know, apparently, I wonder if someone, was it a working person, working cowboy was using them, or were they, were they dress boots, were they something that was only worn out once in a while, or were they like an every, everyday thing?
Oops, see? See what I did? Going too fast. I cut the leather right there when I was trying to open up the seam. So, you know, now now I've uh I've made it where I've made it where I don't have full access anymore to that whole side, you know, so if I want to use it for something. See here. I mean, I can work around that, of course. But uh, but you know, if I if I had wanted to use that whole side with perfectly unblemished piece here, then of course uh, cutting it right there didn't do me any good. But of course I got some holes here, so I'd have to cut around those anyway. But you see what I mean. So anyway, these are the two halves of a boot. See that? So they would get sewn together. This whole thing would be turned inside out. So you'll notice here, it's kind of interesting. We have a small piece of snakeskin here. With a little bit larger piece in the center where the heel is. And then another piece on the side here, and then all that goes together with one larger piece right here. Now they they put a little bit of filler in here. See, I don't think that that's normal when you make boots. I think that normally they would uh, they would cover the whole piece. But if you think about it, right? So on this side, on this side, you'll see how that comes down inside. But on this side right here, you got this extra little seam right here. And I believe that's because that's be, I believe that's because when they when the snake itself wasn't enough wide enough to cover this whole piece, so they took a little piece and put it in there and just put a very small seam in there, and um, that's hardly noticeable. But again, you know that might be one of the things that if you're if you're a boot person, um, if you're a boot person, that might be a big quality thing for you. You know, something to look at. When you're uh, when you're looking at these uh, these types of things, okay. So uh, you know what? With that, I'm pretty much boring you guys right now. But uh, just remember this boot, and um, in a month or so, probably that'll make its way into a case, and I'll probably mesh these two videos together so people can see where this came from. But there you go. 17 minutes on deconstructing a boot, and uh, we're not all the way done yet. So. Anybody who's really bored and needs something to sleep to, here's a video for you.